Uh, so our next speaker is Marco Cini uh, from the Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology. He's going to talk about the use of INSAR for urban flooding. Um, so Marco, there we go. Hello, hello everybody. Hello everybody, happy to present you some uh, recent results we are having uh, with uh, my colleague at least uh, on mapping flood in a urban area using uh, SAR data. So when we map flood, we usually, uh, we have to consider three different length cover classes where the SAR uh, signal behave differently depending if uh, flood water occurring or not. And generally in, on bare soil, we are expecting a decrease of the backscattering with respect to a dry, uh, dry situation, while in a vegetated area, we are expecting an increase of the backscattering in case of the canopy is not too dense to hamper the penetration by the signal. My, while in urban area, we are expecting as well an increase of the backscattering looking to the intensity, but this is not so high for, uh, because uh, this uh, it depends uh, from the geometrical arrangement between the line of sight of the sensor with respect to the building facade. Indeed, this increase of backscattering is high if the, the um, line of sight of the sensor is orthogonal to the to the building to the building facade. And this is and uh, this uh, this backscattering decrease uh, one, uh, moving uh, from uh, this uh, uh, vertical. Um, this orthogonal uh, ori orientation. Uh, then uh, if we look uh, also, this is what happened uh, in case of the uh, copolarization uh, data. But if we look, for example, to cross polarization uh, uh, data, we have uh, the opposite behavior. So that uh, when the, the, the line of sight is not orthogonal, the intensity of the backscattering is, uh, is higher. So uh, looking to, to this picture, it makes sense to take advantages of both channel to detect, uh, to detect um, uh, the presence of water in front of, uh, in front of a building. Of course, uh, the intensity, uh, this inc the increase of the, the backscattering is not so high looking just to intensity because uh, uh, the only thing that changes is the dielectric constant of water with respect to uh, surface before, and uh, while the, the roughness remain uh, almost constant. Uh, so uh, uh, another feature that could be used uh, uh, using SAR data is the insert coherence. The insert coherence is a cross correlation uh, between two different images uh, uh, using a sliding window. Uh, but uh, looking to the complex um, uh, complex signal of the SAR data. So we look also to the phase of the data. So it's much more sensitive to changes uh, with respect to just uh, the, the intensity. Uh, in general, uh, to work with, uh, to, with the, these insert coherence, we compare two images, we take two images and we extract uh, the coherence between the two. In general, uh, if nothing changes, the coherence is high, while if something changes, the coherence uh, is low. Uh, in general, uh, to work uh, to detect uh, uh, to detect changes, uh, take advantages, take, take advantage of uh, coherence, we use three images two before the, the event and one uh, during the event. And we compute two couple of uh, coherence image. One uh, uh, we name pre-event and one co-event. The, 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 the pre-event uh, pre one is uh, extracted using uh, two image before the event and the coherent uh, co-event one uh, using one image before and uh, one uh, during the event. In general, it's expected that uh, in uh, area affected by changes, uh, the coherence uh, in the co-event uh, uh, decrease. Um, uh, so, uh, of course, uh, the coherence uh, can decrease and is affected by many other factors, uh, such as uh, uh, the effect of um, uh, vegetation or uh, 
for other for other changes. So uh, to, uh, to to take advantage of it, we should focus focus our analysis on uh, on our uh, on. Uh, uh, on target which are uh, still in time and basically buildings so here is the the, the sketch of the um, of our approach where we have of course the the, the we detect uh, the, the the flood over bare soil or a scarcely vegetated area and then we have a part of the algorithm that focus on uh, urban area uh, as a previous step is uh, uh, we have to compute uh, a building map uh, starting from uh, Sentinel, uh, uh, Sentinel-1 data in this case, or another kind of SAR uh, data in order to identify the double bounce area where the coherence is expected to be, to be high. And then uh, we compute uh, the, um, the, the coherence pre and co for the BD and the DH uh, channel. And we focus the analysis of this decrease on uh, just uh, double bounds, uh, double bounds area. So we extract basically a, um, a flood map over bare soil, one uh, using VB uh, coherence, and one VH uh, coherence, focusing on um, building up area, and then we combine uh, at the end the, the final map. Uh, here is an example of how it looks um, a building map from uh, Sentinel-1 uh, data. In this case, this is an image from uh, uh, Houston area. It's quite challenging because there are a lot of vegetation and also buildings are quite uh, small with respect to the 20 meter resolution of the, uh, of the data. Uh, but here is the, the building map extracted from uh, Sentinel-1 data and here the optical uh, image. Uh, the first example I will show you is the flood event occurred in Houston on 2017. For this event, we have two images, uh, SLC images acquired before the event and one uh, during, the, during the event, at 20, uh, 20 meter resolution uh, images. And here is an RGB color composition uh, between uh, the intensity pre, pre and post uh, event, where in red they highlighted the, the decrease of the backscattering on uh, uh, scarcely vegetated area. And here is a, a color composition of coherence. So you can see that the, the coherence uh, is lost everywhere in the, in the image, while in urban area still uh, we have some. Uh, uh, the coherence is still present, and just in some area uh, there is a decrease uh, due to the uh, the presence of flood. So this is show that uh, we have to focus the analysis on really uh, steady and uh, stable target uh, in order to get advantage advantage of the the coherence. And here is the final uh, the final flood map where we have in light blue. Uh, we have uh, flood on bare soil and dark blue in urban area. Here is the the uh, the final map uh, just focusing on over uh, Houston uh, city where it's possible to see in light blue better here the flood over bird soil and in dark blue area uh, flood affecting uh, urban area. Uh, we compare this with crowdsourcing data from Digital uh, Globe and uh, we can see that uh, and I will show you in the slide after. Uh, that uh, the the point um, the, the the points detected from the ground sourcing uh, overlap uh, with our uh, our map. Uh, here is uh, an example. Uh, so we see here the crowd sourcing point detecting water within building, and here the um, uh, the, the, the the flood map we obtain with with uh, our algorithm. So they 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 look quite uh, similar, and here is uh, uh, what we gain if we combine BD and DH uh, polarization, uh, because it's clear that uh, in um, blue we have the area where both polarization detect uh, flood, while in uh, purple and uh, and green where this uh, decrease of coherence is detected just with uh, one uh, one channel. Uh, we applied this approach also for another another test case, a flood event uh, this year in Jakarta in January, 
And also here is the, the final map. Uh, also in this case, we use Sentinel-1 uh, data and we apply exactly the same approach as, uh, as before. So in light blue, we see uh, flood over bird soil while dark, uh, dark blue here, and this is the flood in urban area, while the white area are the building which were not affected by, uh, by flood. Uh, here is a detail what uh, I'm saying. So here we see that in this urban area, uh, we were able to detect flood using the coherence uh, where uh, in, uh, in the intensity we don't see uh, basically any change. While in red, the, here is the, the flood outside, outside the city that, is, uh, that has been mapped uh, using the intensity. Also in this case, uh, we can see that the combination um, of both polarization can help us uh, to, to increase the chance to, um, to detect flood in uh, urban area. So to conclude, I presented uh, an automatic algorithm which is able to detect flood over urban area. And uh, of course, uh, this approach is really has been made possible thanks also to uh, Sentinel-1 uh, characteristics, uh, which are basically, um, uh, so Sentinel-1 has three main advantages as uh, um, it, it provides, it provides uh, um, Co and cross polarization data. Uh, he has a really small orbital tube and also a really uh, short um, temporal uh, baseline. These are all characteristics that uh, decrease, um, uh, decrease uh, the uh, so the, the, the decrease the, the, the chance to to make decrease the, the coherence due to other effect and not just to changes occurring. Uh, uh, during um, a flood, uh, a flood event. So the the, the the approach has been tested for two events, and uh, for one of the two, we have also other data to compare the result, uh, which uh, look uh, quite um, quite quite promising. Uh, so I conclude my presentation, and I want to just to provide you other. Two other information. So the, this uh, automatic chain for detecting uh, uh, for detecting flood in urban area, uh, we are implementing this in uh, the framework of an Idris project, which is an ISA project led by Roberto Rudari from uh, Chima Research Foundation. Uh, for this, um, in this project, we have already implemented an automatic uh, chain to map flood over Southeast Asia using intensity SAR data and also uh, optical data. This chain is already operational and by the end of the, this year will be integrated also with this tool to map flood in, um, in urban area. And this is last information. We are part also of a project H2020 eShape and we are leading uh, the pilot number two, which regards the satellite EO derived water bodies and flood water record over Europe, which has as an objective to generate water bodies and flood water record over Europe. This is not an operational project, it's more uh, for uh, research, it's a more research oriented uh, project. And also, uh, we want to understand flood hazard at continental scale based on. Uh, EO data and also to the object is also to support uh, uh, different application and research activity of uh, of this uh, global flood partnership community. The partner are SMH, SMHI and uh, Demos, and of course uh, uh, for co-design the the product we are developing we. I use it, we are taking advantage of also of this community, uh, so the global flood management uh, partnership. And in this framework, uh, we prepare um, a, a, a um, flood mapping uh, uh, record over um, over Myanmar. Uh, this is a flood record of uh, extracted from Sentinel One over two two years, and we have. Uh, uploaded this in Google Earth Engine uh, Engine app. So uh, I invite you to to link to this um, uh, to this uh, to Google Earth Engine and 
take a look to the this uh, this product and uh, this uh, flat record that has been uploaded there and uh, just after this uh, this meeting we will send you to all of you an um, an email to have, to to have access to this database uh, with a questionnaire in order that you could provide us feedback on uh, this uh, product and layer that are made available in order in order to improve the the product itself so thanks a lot for your attention